I just finished working on a documentary on the UFO crash in Aurora, Texas in 1897. Uh, it's been just a wonderful project. Uh, I've been working with Jim Mars on this. He has done over 30 years worth of research and since we've started going out there with film crews, new information has come up. We've had an alien artifact come up being brought to us and we've been able to take the alien artifact out and had some preliminary testing on it. It's got some unusual properties about it. Um, we've also had um, been out to the cemetery. We've um, had several of the local residents show us where they moved the alien after the 1970s um, attention to the crash. All the people kept coming out to the cemetery and wrecking the headstones. The residents removed the headstone, dug the body up themselves, and moved it to another part of the cemetery. And we've been able to ascertain where that is. Uh, we've also had people come up to us and tell us about um, the fact that when, in 1897, when the crash occurred, that the alien, uh, the pilot of the ship, did not die immediately and we've had several reports that he was alive and befriended the town folk of Aurora and that a man in black from the government, we we're talking a hundred years ago, came out and basically hunted the alien down and shot him. He was hidden by the local Comanche Indians in the hills of Wise County for a period of time. Um, and we've got other reports that part of the body is in the cemetery, part of the body was left with the Indians, um, and we're still getting more information on that. Um, while filming the documentary, we have had just all kinds of bizarre uh, occurrences. Um, cameras that will not work in the Aurora Cemetery. Uh, we had a very high-end beta cam in there, and it just will not function in the cemetery. Take it out of the cemetery, and the camera will work. Uh, we've had uh, batteries that will suddenly drain, but then suddenly be full powered when we get away from the cemetery. We've had uh, tape that jumps off the track. When you get it out of the cemetery, it suddenly jumps back on the track. Uh, we've had tapes get jammed in the cameras, and then we get them out of the cemetery, and then suddenly they become unjammed. And um, so it's been an interesting experience, to say the least. Well, in the 70s, um, Jim and was working for the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, and they actually went out there and proposed an explanation of the It was out by the whole area suffered from an outbreak of fever. There was an outbreak of smallpox back hundred years ago. So they were afraid that any exhumation in the wrong place might exhume a body that died from those diseases and there might again be another outbreak. And that was a concern. And plus they still went picking up grandma and said, hey, this is an alien. <laughs> and uh, they actually took some high end metal detectors out there and um, were able to find bits of metal in the original proposed grave site. And uh, when they went out there to, they got permission to get those pieces of metal out of the grave. They noticed that when they put the equipment back over the grave, it was suddenly not registering again. There was no more metal there. And they got down on their knees and they brushed away some loose dirt and they found these little holes drilled into the ground exactly where the metal was being picked up on the metal detectors. And somebody had taken a very small core sampler and a core sample the bits of metal out of the ground so they were no longer there. We've also gotten accounts from the townspeople that about every 10 years people, men in black, government officials will show up out there and sweep the area with um, some very high-end you know, detection equipment, the kind of stuff that's you know, not available to you or I.